Practical Radiation Protection Course. This short video runs through the practical use of an image intensifier. Your employer is legally responsible for ensuring that the machine is maintained, fit for purpose, there is correct staff protection available and that the area that the image intensifier is to be used in is appropriate. When you are using the machine, you take on the role of an operator. You take on a legal responsibility to ensure that standard operating protocols are in place and you are responsible for the protection of staff working with you as well as protection of the patient. The kit. We have a Vertec image intensifier. There are many other models available. Make sure you are familiar with the one in your hospital. Basically, a mini C arm has an X-ray generator, an image collector, an adjustable arm, foot controls, a screen, keyboard and printer. There are buttons on the generator. The most useful button every day is the laser pointer which helps centre the part you want in the X-ray beam. You can also use the buttons to take x-rays, however in practice both your hands will be used so you would normally take an x-ray with the foot controls. You can also save using buttons on the x-ray generator. This button is for taking videos. One push will give you a continuous burst which isn't recorded. Two pushes will give you a cine film which will record a short film as a loop. The remainder of the buttons control the energy of the x-rays and the quality of the image. The machine programming is so good that these buttons are best left well alone. Also on the x-ray generator is a lever which controls the x-ray field view. This is either a limited field or a full field. Ensure that the lever has been moved fully across into position. When you're positioning the C arm, release the catch and position the image intensifier as shown here. Moving the machine. If there is a catch for the actual C arm, make sure that the arm is restrained before moving the machine. Move the machine slowly. This is an expensive bit of kit and you're not in a race. Make sure you have enough space to manoeuvre and check that the theatre doors are open sufficiently to move the machine into the theatre. If necessary, get a buddy to help. Lead aprons. Our hospital policy is that staff working within two metres of the x-ray generator must wear lead aprons. Some theatre departments use the same protocols for the mini C arm as for a full C arm and any staff member within the theatre itself must be wearing a lead apron. As the operator it is your responsibility to check that all staff members are protected. Consider whether your patient needs protection. Most hospitals do not require this as the dose delivered to the body by scatter is very low. However, you need to know your local hospital policy, particularly in regard to pregnant women. Care of lead aprons. Lead aprons are designed to protect you and your staff members from x-ray scatter. They should be properly maintained and should be stored hung up on the rails provided in your department, not taken off and discarded over anything that's available. Setup. Consider how you're going to position the machine around the other kit in theatre, including the patient, the scrub nurse, the scrub nurse's trolley, an assistant and any other machines within the operating theatre. 
make sure that the electrical cable hasn't become a trip hazard. Turning the machine on and inputting patient details. Here's the on switch. Wait for the computer to boot up. Enter your local password and then press perform. Input the patient details. And when you've done this, press perform. Drape in the machine. Often a simple shower cap is suitable. However, sometimes you will need to put on a full U-drape. The drape comes out of the packet with labels for the X-ray generator and the image collector. Whilst this can be done single-handed, it is easier to do with two people. Turn the C-arm horizontally. Put your hands within the sterile part of the drape, the elasticated part, and stretch it over the C-arm. Unfold in the plastic so that the machine is covered and secure with ties. Positioning. The position of the patient relative to the C-arm depends on the operation or injection you're performing. Here are some options. For hand surgery, you may want to bring the x-ray in from the foot of the bed so that the patient's hand is put directly onto the image collector. When you're positioning this, make sure that the patient's arm can reach the detector before you prep up. Make sure that you position the foot plate underneath the detector and then when you're operating, you'll turn 90 degrees to face the detector and look over your right shoulder at the screen. For some operations, you will want to screen through the hand table. If you, as the main operator, will sit at the head end of the hand table, you bring the machine in from the foot diagonal to fit underneath the hand table. To lower the C-arm, release the catch on the arm itself and gently manoeuvre the detector underneath the table. If the main surgeon is sitting at the foot end of the hand table, the image intensifier would come in from the head end. For hand injections, we have the patient sit in and we bring the machine in to the side of the injection, making sure that the patient's shoulder and elbow are in a relaxed position. Before you begin injecting, make sure that you can see the screen. For foot views, bring the machine in next to the table and position the image intensifier as shown here. Minimising the dose to the patient and to yourself. Check that the collimator is set to an appropriate width for your investigation. Move irrelevant things, particularly metal surgical instruments, out of the X-ray field. Move your fingers and hands out of the field. Only use implements when necessary to stabilise the hand. Surgical instruments can be used, but as these are metal, they increase the radiation dose. An alternative shown here is a 20 mil syringe, which is radiolucent. Remember not to lean in to check the position as you screen. There will be scatter and this will increase the dose to your eye lenses. Normal glasses or loops do not stop x-rays. Before you screen, check you can reach the foot pedals. Check you can see the screen. Check that all staff are clear or wearing lead. Check you are leaning away from the X-ray beam and that your hands and fingers are not within the X-ray beam. Tell your team that you are about to screen, then screen. Documentation. Make sure that a record of the X-ray dose is kept. This is usually the DT and DAP. This needs to be recorded either in a book or onto the electronic theatre patient record. To print scans at the end of the procedure, click Review, then select the images you want, and then click Print. For saving scans, follow the same process 
then click Save. Saving images to Chris. Use the cable to connect the machine to the hospital network and then follow your hospital's local policies to import images into your X-ray network.